Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, let me preface my comments by just pointing out that even though I didn't have a mainstream video up here online on it, uh, last night I actually had the Memphis Grizzlies against the Golden State Warriors. And the Warriors put on a clinic, blew them out. Steph Curry looked like Steph Curry. As my premium subscribers know, um, the point I'm making is simply you want to consider the fact that gambling's not 100%. Uh, I'm not here pretending to be someone who makes perfect predictions, right? I'm someone who is, you know, just trying to make educated guesses like everyone else, right? So seriously, just understand this is an opinion from a complete stranger online. In the Adrian broner Sean Porter fight that's just been announced, my initial thoughts are to take Sean Porter in this one, right? A few things are concerning. Uh, the first is they're talking about a catch weight. Understand any catch weight favors Adrian Broner, right? They're talking about a catch weight, for example, of 145 pounds. Understand that even though they're roughly the same height, Sean Porter is the bigger man. And understand Sean Porter last fought at 145 pounds in 2011, four years ago, right? So there is a concern, especially since the date they're talking about for the fight is next month. There is a concern that a 145-pound catch weight is really going to force Sean Porter to lose pounds he hasn't had to lose for several years. By contrast, Adrian Broner's last fight, he came in against John Molina at 141 pounds, right? So Broner will be able to have dessert and still make the 145 pound weight limit, right? Understand too how much smaller than Porter Broner is. Broner weighed 134 pounds for a fight that took place in 2013. Now why do I think Sean Porter wins this fight? The legs. Right? Adrian Broner sets up shop, doesn't move that well in my opinion. I don't think the extra weight is going to help him move any better. Make no mistake, he's a master in the pocket, no question about it. But against a more mobile fighter, I believe he's going to have a harder time keeping up. Now, Sean Porter is much more mobile. Just compare and contrast the two men's battles against Paulie Malinaji. Right? Malinaji goes the distance with Adrian Broner. I want you to revisit that fight. That fight could have gone either way. That's a photo finish fight. Malinaji's moving around the ring, he's shooting a jab at times. He's frustrating Adrian Broner, right? Broner couldn't quite track Malinaji down, right? Malinaji made sure he didn't sit in the pocket too long. He didn't give Broner a chance to set up shop. Broner needs to set up shop. Now contrast that with Malinaji's fight against Sean Porter, right? Porter is fighting an inside-outside game that involves movement. Neither guy wants to linger in the pocket. So Broner is outside. He comes inside with power shots against a mobile Pauli Malinaji. Porter ends up stopping Malinaji in the fight. Right? Understand Porter's style is made for guys who stay too long in the pocket, like Adrian Broner. By being outside, right, this is why ambush fighting is really a wave of the future, right? By being outside and not really engaging too much on the inside, 
right? You hide the angles of your punches, right? A technician like an Adrian Broner isn't able to fully see your punch pattern. He set up a marginal line inside, right? He's hoping to play chess with you. You're not quite at the chessboard. Now let me say this. A few optical illusions are working here, I'm guessing. They're going to impact the Las Vegas line. I haven't seen the line on this fight yet. I'm making this video on May the 12th, 2015. Right? I'm making this video very early. But understand, Adrian Broner just fought a guy who is a mid-range hooker who hangs around the pocket, John Molina, right? John Molina is not moving around the ring, right? Don't confuse John Molina with Sean Porter, right? John Molina is right in front of you trying to bang with you. I'm guessing people who saw that fight saw Adrian Broner put on a masterpiece, right? Saw Broner rolling away from punches, saw Broner leaning, so Molina's hooks ended here and Broner was safe. Saw Broner timing counters, catching Molina clean. Right? Saw Molina's cornerman Joe Goosen pleading with Molina for more action. But understand Molina couldn't up the action because he was getting hit with crisp counters when he tried. Right? Then I'm sure many people saw a very high profile fight involving Sean Porter and Kell Brook. Understand, Kell Brook is underrated. Understand, Kell Brook is big for a welterweight, right? He's a big 147. Molina weighed 140. 140 against Adrian Broner, right? Understand, Kell Brook has hand speed. Molina can't dream of. Kell Brook would destroy John Molina. Right? Dare I say, of all the opponents both men have faced, in my opinion, Kell Brook is by far the most dangerous. Now, you look at the Kell Brook Sean Porter fight. Right? Porter lost that fight, lost his title in the fight. And I'm telling you, a lot of fans are going to equate Cal Brook to John Molina. They're going to say, man, you know, Broner looks so good against John Molina. How could he not beat Sean Porter? Right? They're not going to realize Sean Porter was fighting a better fighter at a higher weight. Right? Let me also say, too. And I say this with the utmost sincerity. That Sean Porter going the distance against Cal Brook was an accomplishment. Right? You saw that in the JoJo Dan fight. When Cal Brook gets on a roll, folks, guys are falling down in the ring. You're not looking at a scorecard at the end of 12 rounds asking, wow, who, who won this fight? Right When Cal Brook gets rolling, either the guy barely survives, Matthew Hatton, right? Where you're watching that fight and you're saying, man, is, is Hatton going to hang on here to go the distance, right? Either the guy barely survives or the guy's KO, right? Online here, I spoke up Carson Jones before his first fight against Cal Brook. Let's just say the rematch wasn't close, was it? Right? So don't be fooled by their recent performances. Let me also point out, too, Cal Brook is mobile, like Sean Porter. You didn't really notice Porter's foot speed against Cal Brook, because guess what? Cal Brook has foot speed. Let me also point out, too, that that fight had a big moment in it. Right? That happened repeatedly. Sean Porter would jump inside. Kell Brook found a way to tie him up. Now let me say, Kell Brook didn't always have that ability. 
you need to realize that as Kell Brook gets older, he's adding things to his game. In many ways, he's like Vladimir Klitschko. Where you look at the guy and you say, whoa, I, I don't recall Kell Brook being able to tie up guys like this. Right? It was jarring. It was surprising. Are you sure that when Sean Porter jumps in against Adrian Broner, Broner's going to be able to tie him up like that? Let me shake things up a bit. The second best fighter. Either guy has fought. Right? Look at the Sean Porter resume. Look at the Adrian Broner resume. Let's just ignore all the marketing and all the hair combing and all the nicknames, right? Showtime, uh, the problem, right? Let's just look at the actual resumes. In my opinion, Cal Brooks, the toughest opponent either of these guys has fought. In my opinion, the second toughest opponent either of these guys has fought is Devin Alexander. Sean Porter fought Devin Alexander. Right? Sean Porter, in my opinion, has fought the tougher opponents. Sean Porter's fought Julio Diaz, who I feel is underrated. Right? Julio Diaz, the same guy who dropped Amir Khan in a fight. Who, in my opinion, in the first two rounds, I know it's a short fight, showed you a little bit of the blueprint on how to fight Keith Thurman. Right? I'm telling you, Sean Porter has the more impressive resume. I know many of you are saying, hey, wait a moment. Come on now. Didn't Adrian Broner fight Marcus Maidana? Right? Let's be real here. Maidana fought Devin Alexander. Folks, that fight was not close. That's a fight that needs to be revisited. Right? Let me point out, if Marcus Maidana hops in the ring with Cal Brook, now I'm making a big assumption here, and you need to double-check this because I'm not sure if this is the right assumption to make. I myself am in doubt. Right? But if Cal Brook is still Cal Brook, if that machete attack on his leg hasn't hurt his movement, and he wasn't forced to move a lot against Jojo Dan, the fight he's had since the attack, but if Cal Brook is still Cal Brook, I believe Marcus Maidana would be target practice for Kel Brook. Right? Kel Brook would be moving around the ring. Maidana would be trying to catch up to him. Maidana's too slow for Kel Brook. Right? So my point is simply this. Sean Porter has one loss. And it was by decision. After 12 rounds against an excellent fighter, Kel Brook. Right? Don't sleep on Showtime. Understand, Devin Alexander couldn't handle Sean Porter's ambushes. Couldn't handle it. When Porter gets inside and gets low, right? When he gets inside and gets low, many opponents don't know what to do. Because Broner's really a puncher, stationary puncher. I'm not sure if he's really had to deal with the dynamic where the other guy is leaping in. The other guy can lead with power shots. I'm telling you, Broner thinks like a puncher. Right? He's accustomed to hunting, not being the hunted. So I'm expecting Broner to be on his front foot, but then to quickly learn he's not fighting John Molina. He's not fighting Carlos Molina. He's not fighting Marcus Maidana. He's fighting a guy who's mobile, who's going to be moving around the ring. Then he's going to find out that Sean Porter can fight inside, right? Unless Broner has the kind of clinching ability of Cal Brook, right? Sean Porter can fight inside, and Sean Porter moves better than him, and Sean Porter is accurate in his lunges. Let me make another point, and I don't make it lightly. The stars aligned that night when Kel Brook fought Sean Porter, right? If you had 
a different referee in that fight who didn't allow Kell Brook to tie up Porter every time he jumped in. Right? For example, if you had the kind of refereeing you had in the Bryant Jennings Vladimir Klitschko fight where that ref wasn't going to have a lot of excessive holding. Right? That fight could have been fought differently. Right? Understand if Sean Porter jumps in Adrian Broner ties him up and then the ref starts warning Broner about excessive holding. Right? Isn't this what we just saw in the Ricky Burns Omar Figueroa fight? Right? Then Broner's going to find himself in a whole lot of difficulty. Right? I like Sean Porter in this fight. I think Porter just moves too well. I think Porter's resume is better. I think Porter is the bigger man. In comparing and contrasting, I think that the Paulie Malignaggi fights both guys had are instructive. I think Port Porter is a bit underrated. Um, I'm sure Porter has looked at that Kell Brook tape ad nauseum and is thinking of ways to jump in without being tied up. Keep in mind, to tie you up, a guy has to be able to turn your shoulders or grab your arms. Right? There are ways to jump inside, have one arm knock down the guy's arm as he tries to tie you up, and then to go to work and stuff like that. I think Broner's a master, but I think Broner works better when he's able to set up shop and not move too much. Right? I think Broner's footwork doesn't compare to Sean Porter's footwork and foot speed. I think it's a below the waist fight. I like Sean Porter in this one. That's my initial take. Let me hear yours. Right? Leave your comments for me here online. I understand that both of these guys have only one loss each. Right? My point to you, though, is simply, you know, I would expect Cal Brook. Again, if Cal Brook is still Cal Brook, legwise. I would expect Kell Brook to beat Adrian Broner by a wider margin than he beat Sean Porter. Right? I think movement is underrated. I think Porter has a back foot game. Right? I'm not sure if Adrian Broner does. I think Broner has been channeling late 30s year old Floyd Mayweather. Right? Understand when Floyd was in his 20s, he moved a lot better than Broner moves right now. Understand even today, I would argue that Floyd Mayweather is the better athlete than Adrian Broner. They could call each other little brother and big brother. They're not the same fighter. Right? I think Adrian Broner is going to have a problem with Showtime's athleticism and foot movement and ability to come inside leading with power shots. I'm not sure if Broner is going to be able to defensively tie up Porter like Cal Brook did. I like Sean Porter in this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this too. This is a fight where you want to keep track of the weights. Right? You want to make sure if there is a catch weight that Sean Porter's able to make it comfortably. Understand, Porter started his career at a heavier weight than welterweight. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.